Hey guys and welcome to today's video. This video is going to be the first of a new series and I'm going to be talking about how to most effectively train different muscle groups of the body. So today's going to be chest is one of the biggest muscle groups in the body and it's the one that everyone wants. I'm huge. So then, a little bit about chest. It has two main parts. You have the clavicle head, which is the top, because of the clavicle, and the sternal head, which lies just below upper breast, basically. So, you can't actually train these individual heads in isolation. The best way to explain it is a flat press is still going to work your upper chest, your lower chest. And an incline will um, target the upper wall, but you are still going to have utilization in the mid to lower chest. So, our decline here on a downwards angle is still going to utilize the mid chest, even though it is targeting your lower chest. So, there are two conventional ways to train the chest there is a press, press, and to fly. Uh, these different movements have different benefits. So, a press movement, you can lift heavier weight. So, you're going to get more muscle breakdown from the weight, but you're not hitting the same range of movement, uh, motion. Whereas a fly, you can't lift as much, but you have a much bigger range of motion. Um, just see what I mean about the, the full, you got a full contraction from the, the fly. Just see what I mean. Do a press uh, to your chest. Now, do a, a uh, squeeze the chest up, balls up a fist. It's uh, because of a full contraction. You know, the chest is squeezing to its its full potential. Um, all right. How often to train your chest? Now, your chest can train up to three times a week, but obviously that's not going to be able to happen for most people because you haven't got that many out sessions to train to your chest three times. Um, and that's only going to work for you three, three times a week if you're hitting everything perfectly, your macros, your sleep, your recovery, you know, you supplement correctly. Now, you need supplements, but they do help with recovery and growth. Um, and if you're not hitting these things, the first thing you want to do is sign up for my coaching because they are going to hit these things. The second thing you want to do is reassess your entire life choices because you're doing something wrong. Um, but anyway. The optimal amount to actually be training your chest is three times, uh, twice a week. You would hit, uh, you know, chest triceps on a Monday and then a Thursday. That's what I've been doing, worked well for me. This is optimal because you've got a perfect amount of breakdown from those two sessions, but you've also got a perfect amount of recovery between the sessions, so you're not you're going in ready to build more muscle again on the second session, exactly the same as you are on the first session. Um, if this isn't feasible to you and you're only, even, you're only able to train three days a week, then I would recommend a upper, lower upper split. You hit your upper body twice a week because, in my opinion, uh, my experience as well, um, your legs will grow more sets and reps but less frequency and they still grow very nicely. Compared to your upper body, I'd say lower sets and reps per session but higher frequency, just keep them back and constantly. Obviously you're recovering in between, just keep hitting them regularly to see the growth. So, my top five chest exercises. So we've got incline bench, just work out, fill out that, fill out the chest, you need to fill that, fill that out to itself. Big. Uh, an incline fly, pretty much the same reason, just get the full contraction of your, your chest. Flat dumbbell, I'd say for, for the incline bench, that could be dumbbell barbell, doesn't make a lot of difference. For flat dumbbell, I will say dumbbell because you've got a nice range of motion and you are in a more compromised position on your shoulders and the dumbbells, you know, you can go where you want to go, you're not locked in by a butter. Uh, chest press again then, it's pretty much the same as a flat dumbbell press, but you can push more weight because you're locked in, you haven't got the stability issues to worry about. You're locked in, you can push more, more breakdown because you're isolating your chest, essentially. Obviously, your triceps are pushing as well, but, you know. Um, and then a push-up 
and this is essential. One, pump you up, warm up, brilliant, cool down, just for if you want to bake, bake your chest right at the end of the session, there's maximum push-ups in there. Also, you can do it anyway, no effect needed. Write down current situation, can't go to the gym, push-ups are essential. And you might have noticed that I haven't actually said any direct lower chest exercises, and there's a good reason for this. I feel like you hit your lower chest enough in a flat press and your daily life every time you push downwards you're using your lower chest um, I feel like it grows quite well it is the strongest part of your chest just naturally but I do feel like if you train it like you target it because you can't train it in isolation you target it with your decline presses and you have any flat stored in the chest it uh, doesn't work out well because it pushes it up and it, it essentially Learn that the other way when I was 16. Don't overtrain your lower chest. 